Are you looking for a heater that's gonna warm your home to your deer stand? Well, let's look at one that might be good for you. What's up everybody and welcome back to Outdoor Gear. My name is Aaron Bottoms and today we're going to dig into the Buddy Flex heater that you saw in our full comparison of the Mr. Heater series. Now this one is for a lot more versatile uses. You can use it inside your home for a larger square space or a larger square foot space or you can use it in your deer stand and you can use it in the duck blind. You can use it camping if you're just sitting around and need a little extra heat. So let's dig into it and see what it's made of. We've already got this bad boy out of the package because, well, you saw it in another video and we don't want to have to unbox and rebox and blah, blah, blah. So, some cool features about the Mr. Heater Buddy Flex. Again, they call it the Buddy Flex because you can open up this little side panel here and you can run your line to your cooker. Now, this does not come with the cooker, unfortunately. It's just the heater, but you can buy that separately and on the other side here you've got another little compartment i'm not really sure what it's for or what goes in there but it can hold a little bit of something something but not much because it doesn't even hold this conversion line for your 20 pound tank it doesn't quite fit in there i thought it might it does not so on the back here you can see you've got either your heater side accessory side when the heater side is on obviously it goes to the front panel here but on the when it goes to the accessory it cuts off the main unit and I will showcase that as well. On the front, you've got a nice piece of metal grating here that we'll test out. It goes all the way up to protect all the front here, as well as this little blast shield to keep the heat going in a direct way. That way, when the heat comes up, it kind of bounces off and goes to the front. Again, it pushes out more towards forward direction. Down here in the bottom, you've got a little bit of a shield for your pilot light. So if the wind's blowing very hard that day, you're not going to have to worry about it blowing out your flame and you know you're going to have to restart it which like on the portable buddy like you can see here there is nothing protecting the front right there on the pilot light versus this guy right there as you can see a little bit of comparison on size to just a little bit bigger it's not quite double the size of your portable buddy but it is a little bit larger it stands up a little bit better and it's got that 180 degree heating surface. And again, these blast shields right here come in very handy on shooting heat out. You've also got handy dandy handle on top. You can grab that guy, take it with you and carry it along the way. And on the bottom here, it actually has where you can attach your uh, cooking element that comes separately or just stands up. It's got a nice surface area on the bottom. So. What you're really here to see is how this thing holds up and how it heats. So we'll hook a tank to it and get started. All right, so you've got two options. You can take your one pound tank like we have here and hook it in. Take the bad boy in here, press it in and screw it in place. Sometimes it takes a little extra to get it started. All right, now this does say it is good for indoor spaces as well as outdoor spaces. So now that you've got your tank on here, you've also got this compartment here that has a little piece here that holds your battery for your ignition switch. So you gotta undo that, pull it down, and that little latch comes off. You put your battery in right here, put this cover back on, put back in place, close your door. Now your little ignition switch here you can hear it clicking, goes on. So when you push in to light it, you turn it a little bit to the left for pilot, and your pilot light comes on. Now, down here you can see the little flame going on. You hold your button back here. And hold your button for about 30 seconds until that pilot light stays on without holding it. Then you can simply turn it to the left with a little push down a little bit and put it on low and that whole surface will ignite. The low setting on here goes up to 8,000 BTU, which is pretty nice. And then if you go all the way up to the high, it's 11,000 BTU. It's not a low, medium, high setting. It is simply you turn the dial kind of further to the left from low to high to get the heats you want. So if you wanted to put it on low and let it low, uh, run 
very low for 8,000 BTU, great. But if you want to take it all the way up to 11,000, it's very simple and just turn the knob. No problem at all. Now, like I said, when you switch it over to the other setting here for your accessory, it cuts out. Now you've still got your pilot light on, but it doesn't go to the front source here. It goes to, to that where, where you can hook your hose up. It'll go out that way. It's as simple as putting the pilot back on and putting it in place and turning it right back on. So it's pretty simple design, pretty easy to handle, no big deal. And again, you can take the one pound heater or you can take your conversion, which I'll show you how to do right now. So to do the conversion, you got your 20 pound tank right here. You got your hose. Now, the inside threads here are uh, reverse threaded. So when you tighten it down, you're actually gonna turn it to the left, like so, to get those threads in there. And just be careful not to cross thread, but it looked a little wonky to me the first time. You can put some tape on there to seal it up a little bit better, but you don't have to. Move this bad boy over. Take off our old tank, which may release a little bit of propane when you take it out. Take uh, your back end here. Screw this bad boy on. Again, you could put a little bit of uh, sealing tape on there, but doesn't have to. Teflon tape is what it really called. Screw that bad boy on. And you are ready to go. Put your gas on, put your pilot down, light it up, hold it till it stays lit. So about 15 seconds. It says 30 seconds, but not necessary. And you're good to go. She'll light on up. So pretty straightforward, simple. Don't have to worry too much. Always turn your gas off. It's not a bad idea to light it up and let your gas completely run out so that there is no pressure on the back end when you take it off. So we'll let that run until it goes out. No big deal. Now, let's really go outside and see what this thing is made of and see what it can handle. All right, to get a little demonstration of what it can do and it takes a little tumble from a height, let's just uh, shove it off my wall here. Coming at you. It's got such a great handle, I just think I could feel it and just And it comes right back to me. What if we do a trick shot? Alley oop! One more time for the people at home. All right. Taking a little gander here. Door opens. Great. Closes. Great. No real damage back here. We got a little bit of a a crack on the handle here, but that's not too big of a deal. I mean. Still functions, wrap a little duct tape on that bad boy. It can take it. Let's move on. Since it's got this great metal frame here, let's see what this little metal pole does to the metal frame. All right. Other than denting this little piece here, Maybe changing a little bit of paint around. Not bad. All right, so as you can see, we've got the unit lit now, and it's got that little uh, kind of protector or that little shield on the front of it where the pilot light is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our air compressor here, and we're gonna blow air kind of at the side in front of it and see how that deflects and how the heater handles some wind. All right. So as you see, the heater kind of it blows out a little bit, but that pilot light still being lit brings it right back up. Now if we put a little bit more direct heat or wind to it, it goes out. But if we reach back here and check this ignition switch, lights right back up. So no big deal. It's a little quick and easy light up. And then as long as it's not a very, very, very strong direct wind, I think we're all right. Not too bad. All right, so before we wrap up, I just want to go over a couple things. Again, this is an eight to 11,000 BTU unit, which means 8,000 low, 11,000 high. It heats up a 295 square foot space. So this 
my shed out here, it's a 12 by 20 shed. It's got some insulation, but not a lot. This thing keeps it nice and warm in here when it's on a 30 degrees or less outside. It's, it's actually very good indoor in this space. In my, it's about the size of a standard living room, not a very big home, not high ceilings, anything like that, but it works. A um, couple other safety features. We're gonna head and light it up and turn it on. So like most Mr. Heaters, it's got the anti-tip safety feature where if it falls over, it typically will cut off. Maybe not mine. Hmm. Wow, okay. Maybe mine lost its feature, but it should have an anti-tip in case something happens. There you go, it cut off there. So maybe mine's just a little damaged, but it should cut off if it falls one way or the other. This one doesn't seem to be. So mine may have lost the safety feature. So keep that in mind that if it gets banged around a lot, you may lose your safety feature. So check it before you go out and make sure you know that if it does get kicked over, pick it up. The other thing I want to talk about is if something does touch that heater right there, it will catch on fire. Plain and simple, my dog on a very cold winter day decided to put her butt against it and she lost some butt hair. It singed her. And um, just be aware of that. It will burn you and it will catch things on fire that are too close. Mine, after beating it around a little bit, I had to take the top piece off here. You got these two screws here and two screws here. This button got a little warped and they got pushed in, so I had to bend the metal out a little bit. And now it seems to be turning on just fine. Again, that safety feature should be on there, but if it's not, be aware that it can have that problem. Either way, these bad boys go for about $138 on Amazon, up to like $150, Bass Pro Cabela's, things like that. That's not a terrible price. It's a little high um, compared to some of their other ones that do kind of the same thing, but this is a great unit. I don't think you're gonna regret buying one of these bad boys. And if, again, with all my videos, I beat them up a little bit. So if you baby this bad boy and you keep it nice and you, you know, bring it in, dry it out after it gets all wet and snowed on and everything like that, you're not gonna have any problems. Again, this is the one pound tank on here. Slap a 20 pound on there. You've got a long life to it and it will keep you nice and toasty. You can put it in your tent, everything like that. I did see your comments about people that said you can put them in your tent. So thank you for those comments. You can put it in your tent and you can stay warm in the winter. Again, thank you everybody for watching, especially the Sears on the Mr. Heaters that you can watch right here. And you can see everything that we're doing with the Mr. Heaters and all of their little buddy and the big buddy and all that stuff. So we really appreciate it. We like your comments. We appreciate you sending out your comments because that helps us move forward and move on and bring you what you would like to see. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and we will see you later.